First of all, plug the DSL cable into the grey socket on the HG612 modem. Plug the other end into the BT OpenReach socket or filter. Then plug an Ethernet cable into the LAN1 socket and plug the other end into the WAN socket on your router. Plug the power cable into the HG612 modem and the other end of the power cable into a plug socket. Turn the modem on and leave it for three minutes. After three minutes, check to see whether you have an internet connection. If for some reason you don't have an internet connection, please switch off your router and the HG612 modem, power up the HG612 modem, leave it for two or three minutes, and then power up your router. Leave the system for a further two or three minutes, and then hopefully this time you should have an internet connection. The next thing we need to do is to plug an ethernet cable into the LAN2 socket and the other end into the Ethernet socket on your computer or laptop. Whenever you wish to log into the HG612 modem to make changes or look at the statistics, we will need to make changes to the network settings on the computer. The changes you make will disconnect the computer you wish to view the statistics on. I will show you in this guide how to make these changes so that you can get into the admin control panel on the HG612 modem and view the statistics and also put them back so that you get the internet back on the computer. First thing we need to do is to go into the network card settings. The best way to do this on a Windows PC is to hold down the Windows key. The Windows key is usually located on the bottom row of keys between the CTRL key and the ALT key and is usually denoted by a Windows flag. With your left hand, hold down the Windows key. With your right hand, tap once on the letter R on the keyboard. That's R for Romeo. Then let go of the Windows key. You should notice a run box appears in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Delete out whatever's in this run box and type N for November, C for Charlie, P for Papa, A for Alpha, full stop, C for Charlie, P for Papa, L for Lima. Then click OK. If you have a network card that's wireless in your computer, we will need to disable this first of all. In my demonstration here, I've got an icon here that says wireless network connection. I'm going to need to disable this. To do this, move your mouse over the wireless network connection and click once on the right hand mouse button. Then move your mouse over the word disable and left click once. The wireless will show as disabled. From this point on, you will not have an internet connection on the computer that you're working on. All other computers should be absolutely fine. Next, we need to right click on local area connection. Then move our mouse down to properties and left click once on properties. Click on the networking tab in the top left hand corner and then double click internet protocol version 4 TCP slash IPv4. On this screen now would be a good time to make a note of the settings that are shown on this screen. I would say 95% of the computers in the world would have this set to obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address automatically. If yours is not set to this, please make a note or if you can take a photograph of the screen 
make a note of all the numbers that appear in all of the boxes. This is very important as when we need to put the computer back on to get an internet connection, we'll need these details in these boxes. So as I say, if you do have numbers in any of these boxes, write the details down, or better still, if you can, take a photograph, as you will need these details later to get the internet connection back on the computer. Once again, this is very, very important. 95% of computers will have it set to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address automatically, like mine is. That's absolutely fine. The next step, we need to actually give the uh, <coughs> a computer an IP address to enable it to connect to the HG612 modem. So we need to click in use the following IP address. In the address box, we need to type 192.168.1 full stop. And then we need to give this a number. Now, I'm going to give it the number 189. If you know that there's something on your network that also has this address, then um, don't use this address, use, use another number. It's the last three digits that are the, uh, are the numbers that we're concerned with. I'd say once again, 99% of computers in the world will be absolutely fine to use 192.168.1.189. If we click into the subnet mask box, automatically it should appear 255.255.255.0. If it doesn't, then manually type this in yourself. Click in the default gateway box and we need to type in here 192.168.1. Press the full stop button and one. Next thing we need to do is click into the preferred DNS server box and type 192.168.1 full stop 1. We can leave the alternate, alternate DNS server blank. Click on OK. Click on OK again. Close the uh, network connections window by clicking on the cross in the top right hand corner. Open up Internet Explorer. At this point here, you will probably get, instead of Google or your homepage coming up, you will probably get the page cannot be displayed. Okay, so we need to click into the address bar at the top of the screen. Okay, delete out whatever's in the address bar at the top of the screen. And we need to type 192, full stop, 168, full stop, 1, full stop, 1. Then we press enter or return on the keyboard. You should now see the Echo Life Home Gateway login screen. In the username box, type admin as the username. Then click in the password box and type admin as the password. Then click the login button. You can now see some information about the modem itself, the device ID, the product type, the version, the software version, the system uptime, and um, various other things you can see through here. The main one that we're sort of concerned with in this guide, I suppose, is the, uh, the, the WAN section. So under status, we click on WAN, and in here, it will tell us all sorts of uh, information about our connection. Now, at the moment, the router that I'm using isn't actually connected to the internet, so there's not really any information or not much information here. Uh, we've also got the XDSL tab here, which tells us details about the connection status, the type of connection, the synchronization status, the DSL uptime, 
um, the attainable rate, the SNR margin, line attenuation, the output power, and also the, the line rate, the upstream and downstream line rate, along with uh, any sort of CRC errors, FEC errors, and HEC errors. Um, if we click on battery here, it actually says here missing battery, don't worry. All the modems, uh, the HG612 modems say that. There's not a problem with the modem. They, they all say that. But uh, there are other settings in here you can go through and look at. Please, if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with these settings because um, if you do, you could end up disconnecting yourself from the internet um, permanently or locking yourself out of the, the modem. So only touch these settings really if you know 100% what you're doing with this. So we've had a look at the uh, the status on here. So we now want to come out of it. So we click on the log out button just at the top here. And there we go, we're back to the um, back to the login screen again. So we click on the cross in the top right hand corner of internet to come back out. And what we need to do is we need to undo the settings that uh, we set earlier. So once again, we hold down the Windows key. The Windows key is the key located between the CTRL and the ALT key on the bottom row of keys on your keyboard, denoted by a Windows flag. Hold this down with your left hand. With your right hand, tap the letter R. That's R for Romeo. Now, hopefully in the open box, you should still have NCPA full stop CPL shown in there. If you do, then click on the OK button. If not, type it in there. So that's N for November, C for Charlie, P for Papa, A for Alpha, full stop, C for Charlie, P for Papa, L for Lima. Click on OK. The network connection box now appears. So we right click on local area connection and then we left click on properties. We double click on internet protocol version four, TCP forward slash IP version four or V4. And we set these figures. If there were figures in these boxes prior to you changing them, put them back as they were. So either using the information that you've written down earlier or from the photograph that you took of the screen or if both of these were set to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address automatically we can just click the, the relevant boxes there or the relevant circles should I say so I'm going to click obtain IP address automatically there to bring that back that deletes all the numbers out of, uh, out of out of the settings there but that's fine if that's how it was so and then we can now click obtain DNS server address automatically and that's fine we click on the OK button and then the OK button again now we move to our wireless network connection and we right click on the wireless network connection left click on enable and then you should see your wireless network connection icon go from grey to being colourful once again. Um, normally this will automatically connect back up to the internet automatically. If it doesn't you might need to restart your computer. We click on the cross here just to close this down and I'm just going to check the internet here so I click on the E and there we go we've got back to Google so the internet's back on at this point now we can't actually get into the statistics of the uh, of, of the HG612 modem but if we do want to go back into them later on you can follow this guide again and go back in sometimes if you've got a spare PC or a spare laptop lying around an old one that you don't use then you could perhaps plug that directly into the LAN 2 port on the HG612 modem and uh, perform what we've just performed on on an old laptop or an old computer um, so that uh, you can just use that for, for monitoring the connection